That's zone zero way over there, our house. But we're not there this year, a very different year. We're in our guest tiny cabin. But I feel like I should show you a few things over here. I mean, finding storage anywhere we can. That was an exit door. And we put a shelf in there. You can't give up your big fridge in homesteading. This is very important stuff. Freezer. But that's not enough. Another fridge. Smack full. Root vegetables. Lamb from the land for tonight. Another storage system that just wasn't here. We brought over our double oven from the Holler house. And probably my favorite little hack is all we had in here was this little tiny half a dishwasher. I said, let's put in another dishwasher. We got a dishwasher and a half in here. And this little guy kept mom awake last night, you little rascal. So I'm gonna show you this next thing, but I'm gonna start whispering. The fridge freezer is not enough. We need a stand-up freezer for all our goodies. And we've got, how many freezers we've got up oh, yeah. Two, three, and then one over in the basement of the holler house. You ready to go? You ready to go? Hey, you got your legs on backwards. This, well, when it's not littered with umbrellas. This is critical for homestead living, especially in a small space, is outdoor living space. This porch, I swear, is the redeeming value of this tiny cabin. I mean, look at this. We take many a meal out here. Why not? Look at that view. Hey, uh, why is there so much of this out? Um, I put that out just in case the cat. No, it'll dry out and they won't want it. The sea monsters, the broody hen, the garden, crop garden, the tomatoes in the high tunnel, the turkeys, and the pasture posse. We're gonna go see all those plus more. Good job, my man. Way to take charge. Before we get started on the tour tour, I've got to show you the most exciting addition to the farm this year. I should say improvement. Boom! A vlog coming out about this soon, but this is a little pond up above our guest house, the people barn, the butchering shed. We have fixed our broken drain pipe. I'll be a little Jerry right now. We got plans for a dock and straightening this up. Little waterfall feature over there. I don't think you guys can see that from there. We're gonna scratch up this bank, get all these twigs, smooth this up. Make it real nice. Look at our waterfall feature. Got a big old rock kids can jump off of when this fills up. The kids' sailboat is about to be lifted. Main creek source into the pond. Blueberries planted on either side of the bank. Come get a little snack while you swim in about July or August. Oh wow, look at that view. It's kind of a little getaway on the farm. <laughs> Diffuse strategic trees. Would you pay me if I stay, kept, took up all these sticks? That sure motivates them, doesn't it? How about I pay you in a nice swimming hole? <laughs> we graded this so we can put sand on this and have a little beach. This is south facing. Yeah, I think you come up here I think by the time you lay down in the sun, you kind of be hidden from the farm and it'd be a kind of a little mini getaway. As a homesteader, one of the keys to success is staying home, but you need to get rest. And to do that, you really need to get away. Otherwise, you're seeing everything that needs to be done. Twigs need to be picked up. Rocks need to be picked up. Oh gosh, it needs to be mowed around the shed. Uh, we need to do something with those grills. Uh, how are we gonna get this manure spreader under shelter? Oh, we gotta take that old train that doesn't work anymore to the metal yard. The wood needs to be piled up. You see what I'm saying? There's always... Where do I move the sea monsters? Where? Yeah. We're gonna keep going that way, in between the two gardens. You see, there's always something to be done. Out of sight, out of mind, it rings true, and sometimes that's important for giving yourself a break. You ready for chores? Yeah. Let's go see the rest of the farm as we do chores. Uh, the butchering shed. Two exciting additions to the farm this year. Very exciting. The track loader, oh my word. What did we do with that? We use it every day. I mean, we used it to smooth out the silt that was pulled out of the pond there. Extremely useful. An old blue. There are some things, I mean, if I could only have one machine, it'd probably be the track loader. It's so versatile. Lucky. What did I call it? Blue. Did I call it blue? Okay, this is Lucky. Hold lucky, because we're lucky if it starts. There are some things like uh, hauling livestock across the farm, or if we were to make hay, we're gonna need lucky, or to pull the milk slad out of a, you know, if you wanna drive in the pasture, it's gonna be less damaging than these machines. Got some implements. Did I dare show you the people barn? 
One second, guys, and we'll go see the farm. A manure spreader, we got that this year. I'll show you what we're gonna do with that in a little bit. 50 year old manure spreader. Should I show you this? This is embarrassing. Cause this was once an amazing people barn, party barn. And now, it's, a new barn. it's turned into a storage barn for things we need to sell from the holler house. Yeah, that's an embarrassment. I should embrace it though. It's just a year of, of big change. Big working on a foundation of our farm. The Holler House, I will show it to you in a minute. You guys hear me calling that the Holler House? We are actually in the Holler, which is short for Burl Holler. Holler is country for valley, which is technically hollow. But us country southern people end up calling it Holler. H-O-L-L-E-R. Front yard, the beautiful one has some amazing sunflowers that have just volunteered and are coming up. The chicken run, we're raising chicks in there. We replaced some of our old lady hens. We put them here in the front yard. It's a bulletproof uh, fencing system. It's usually pretty safe because we're here. Not a lot of pro predator pressure. Hope that's the case still this year. Definitely a deep bedded run. We throw weeds in here for them. Let's do that in a minute, okay? Get in and and put them on wood chips and eventually the chickens break down those wood chips and you end up getting compost. So why you want, that's why you want your chickens, your permanent run chickens next to your garden. In our garden we got jam and cauliflower, some sort of flowers. Here, look, we pick out some weeds, makes weeding fun and throw it to your chickens and everybody likes it. In this bed we've got some squash, some lettuce, we're gonna have some tomatoes climb our Little trellis here. I think yellow squash and zucchini. Another three tomatoes. Pumpkins. Maybe watermelon. Maybe not. Maybe more squash. Same thing. A little bit of greens this time. Maybe some cabbages. More lettuces. Definitely some more greens. Some cabbages. And squashes type thing. Oh, here's something interesting that happened in the garden this year. Our little tree, which is strategically placed south of the, the garden. South is that way, so we're going to get most of our sun from this angle, so we didn't want to shade any of our garden. So we put the tree behind it all. This persimmon just about got killed. You can see it's bare limbs here. Because we had warmth early on in the spring, this thing budded and then we had hard frost and about nearly killed it. As we do this tour, I want to put emphasis on these builds. This is the compost run. Two by four frame, cattle panel, Wall lined with poultry wire so they can't get out. One by six cedar on the bottom to retain the wood chips. I have never put out the plans for this yet, but they're coming. They're they're coming in homestead build. Yo Tambien for this. Yo Tambien's like me too. That doesn't make sense. Como se dice also in Espanol. No se. Move it up one length. Spread the manure love. The pretty shawl, y'all. I had not put out previous plans for this. They are coming, they are coming. With this thing, we discovered laying out the bottom frame all the way out straight. You can still pull it nicely and put the legs in the front. And I think that was one of our best advancements on the chick shawl. And then we ended up doing that with all our chick shawls. We also put the wheels right through it right through the two by four frame as opposed to underneath it. This is different in that we have framing on the side. It's pretty, I mean, this is pretty enough for your front yard. This is pretty enough for an HOA that says no chickens. You know what I mean? This video is sort of the last call on some of these structures before we go to print. We're working on the book now. And as we get the plans ready, we're dripping out the plants so that you guys can build this stuff. You guys can build these raised beds. Those raised beds plans are coming this year. Garden, give you guys perspective. The holler house, let's go see inside there. I'll warn you, it's just the shell. Just take note that the structures of these homesteads are available to you. You can build them yourself. We're coming up with plans. Oh, wow. Who tarped this? They tarped it because we're getting ready 
We have to lift the roof. Let me show you. This is a 2400 square foot blank canvas for the beautiful one. You know, we've opened up a can of worms here. We gotta get this old house up to code. There's some issues there with that. There's some issues there with the beams. And we're gonna take advantage of that. We have, hey, uh oh. Uh oh. Having to get rid of the roof to bring this up to code, which we're gonna save these trusses and build a shed out of them. That's the plan anyway. We're gonna have, uh, why not raise this two feet? Rebecca's gonna have 56 inch windows here. Color. What do you see? Yellow. Yeah, you see a yellow, that's just one color he likes. Basic, passive solar Mama. for your homestead houses, Mama. guys. Life on the south side, the sunny side for the northern hem hemisphere. So lots of windows, big as possible. Put your bedrooms on the north side. Uh, you want it dark and cooler there? Bedrooms on that side, wide open living on this side. Can't wait for you guys to see what beauty has planned. All right, you guys ready for chores? It's some fun running around with plastic now. Kick the shoes off. Is that a protest? Let's go check on uh, Gideon's broody hen. I'm sorry if this lacks some struggles and some continuity. I realize I filmed vlogs before this, but this video comes out first. So try not to be confused. Just take this as a tour and enjoy the other vlogs as a fun homestead story. Pole barn, the jacked up vegetables that aren't gonna make it. Green, I don't wanna show you the greenhouse. Nothing's going on in the greenhouse this year. Ooh, we could go look at the asparagus garden, but to give you perspective, we were just up there in the front yard. We are letting this go. This is an asparagus strawberry patch. Even though this should be like zone two, because look how close it is to our house and we come by it a lot, it ends up not being. It ends up being a little more neglected, so it's not a real good place for a garden that you need to keep weeded. So this has bit, turned into a bit of a jungle garden. Not necessarily, this is all asparagus, this flowering stuff here. There's strawberries in here somewhere, but I think they've gotten weeded out. This is gonna be a future home. Leveling this, raised beds, because there's so much less maintenance. Probably raised beds of asparagus and a strawberry. Don't look, it's such a mess in there. How does that stuff grow without any, without any uh, water? <laughs> no water. I don't know if I want to show you this because it's just because there's nothing in here right now. These are our brooders. We'll get something in here in a week or two, but deep brooders, bulletproof, storm doors, half inch wire mesh, cage, all around. And nothing can get those guys. This is an old stanchion. Sometimes we use it when somebody's being really ornery or needs to be trained. I just, as I walk through this and see this, this didn't happen overnight, none of this. That high tunnel, it didn't even happen in the same year. That greenhouse, the pole barn, all at different times, all over a long period of time. We've been homesteading like 15 years. This was an area our cows could get in during the winter out of the pole barn. It's just, it's just not growing anything like I'd hoped. I just thought these squash and garden would just thrive here. I think it's still co so compact. I think I really need to sock it to it with some wood chips and build up the soil here. Or uncover this and just plant cover crop so that we can build up the soil structure in here by letting some plants grow. Did you not feed them all your scraps? No. Why not? You had food out for them. Oh, okay. So yeah, this stuff. concrete looks great. Do you know I was gonna give a tour today? No. Well, it looks great, thank you. Remember that manure spreader? Well, all this stuff that the beefcake's on, believe it or not, it was wood chips. The cow manure with the wood chips breaks down into compost and then we put the pigs on it. We mixed in corn and these pigs have been looking for that corn and turning it up and turning it into compost even more. We'll put that in our manure spreader and spread it on the weaker parts of our pasture. Little piggies, we need to get you out into the forest, like pronto, retrain you to an electric fence as soon as possible. I'm looking like maybe it's right right here still. We only have six trees left and then, and then we're done with wrapping trees. Heck yes. That's been a big project. We'll show you how we're uh, forestering our pastures with fruit trees in a minute. Don't let me forget. Hooked up his nipple to the to a hose because he'll knock over a 50 gallon drum of water. The lady handles it just fine. Nipple on it. Beefcake? Nope. He'll lift that thing up, 
give himself a, a wallow, won't he? Back end of the pole barn has turned into our barn. We were using our garage as our barn. Put the barn as close to the house as possible. It's your biggest visit on the farm. And for us, the barn is underneath. We're raising our kids in a barn. So they can leave doors open technically. Because yes, they were raised in a barn. Before I show you the birdie hen, I should show you our one freezer. There's, forgive it, forgive me, there's no power down here. Save a few outlets. I like to come in here and check and make sure somebody didn't unplug our freezer so there's light here, that's good. We're just about to get two more pork from our recent harvest. If that vlog is not out, it will be out soon. Ooh, maybe we'll cook this ham. Cheese ham for the 4th of July. We need to do something with those bellies. We need to make some bacon. There's some cover crop. Maybe that's what I put my... That's what I put... Maybe that's what I put on that sacrifice garden there. She's so fat, she don't even want to stand up and eat. Hi, the sea monsters. Dad. Tube man. Great addition to the farm this year. And that's what I'm saying, guys. We didn't always have the tube man. We would lose some sea monsters. We didn't always have the meat shawl. We didn't always have the shock or not net that helps keep little chicks in. I would say the secret to this level of success, 15 years of working on it every single day. Take a break from projects once a week, but working on this every single day. Rain, shine, snow, sleet, wind. Hey, we gonna do your broody? How's she? She's still on it? Yes. Why are you doing that? Hey, get him, get him, answer me. Why what? are you doing that? I want to see if they hatch. Oh, they didn't hatch yet. They got a good two and a half weeks. Really? Two mm -hmm. and a half? Mm -hmm. More on that broody hen coming out in the future vlog. I feel like they're going to need more food. Lots of it. Lily, are you getting them more food? Yeah. Good. All right, you, all you got to do is plug it in now. Two man is like the new scarecrow. Scarecrow in the next level. Crows, hawks, and on. owls away. Well, we haven't plugged it in yet. He's alive. Boys have planted some corn this year. We planted some squash, sprawling fruit. I still don't think that's enough, Birdell. Hey, what just happened? It was working. Shut up! Did you turn the button off? It got unplugged right here. There you go. Something exciting for the meat shaw plans that will be coming out. We experimented. Notice how high it is. Like Lily's walking under there. I mean, that's an advantage. But you know who else can walk under there? Sheep. So this is working. This hasn't been less protection like I thought it might because I thought aerial attacks could come in at more of an angle here. That's why I put it down low, but it doesn't seem to have made a difference. We've been experimenting with this, and that means when we put these meat shaw plans in with the homestead builds, all those plans, that you'll be able to convert this and use it as a sheep shawl. And to convert this to a sheep shawl, all you got to do is install mineral feeders on the axle there. And by the way, that didn't work out. This was an early design. We had slats in the bottom of this and it was to hold extra grain. But when you're doing a hundred chickens, it just makes sense just to bring out a couple of buckets every day. You just run out of your storage grain too soon. It just makes sense. Maybe if you weren't doing 100 chickens, it would make sense. The chicken tractor definitely been one of the most versatile pieces. And those plans are ready. When you back the Kickstarter, you get the plans at the end of the Kickstarter. You'll get the plans for the chick shawl. We've got to go see them. And a lot of you guys are new to homesteading, but you're also new to... They really got a lot to say this morning. Okay, well, you back off. I'm you're closer than I am. Come away. There's a bee's nest in there. Okay, what is all this? Let's put this back to the sea monsters. Oh, no. Lily, I believe this is turkey feed. Turkey's jamming. Nice. All we use for turkeys is this Premier One piglet net. You can step right over it, keep it on. We got a little pan of grit, which is rocks from the creek. Water, how are they doing on water, Gideon? Looks like they're all right. Such an easy poultry. They don't scratch. Let's move their turkey shell over. Simple. Four by four cube build. They perch on this at night. And they, they need to move, Gideon. So we need to move them soon. We'll just move them on down the pasture. The turkey shell too comes with plants. We use it as a perch for our chickens in the greenhouse in the winter. It too is multi-purpose. It's coming soon. That's not a hard design. You don't need walls. You don't need a roof. You don't even need a, it's just a shade cloth roof. 
So it doesn't even need to be waterproof. They don't mind. Potatoes and onions in our crop garden. A little behind on the weeding there. Hopefully we're going to stay on top of it with this corn. No. Normally, no. we're no. jamming out the whole 4,800 square no. feet of crop no. gardens. No. This year no. though, we're working no. on zone zero. No. Our house. This worked out really well. We put just down our unsprayed hay. There's no jungle garden here because nothing grew up through those weeds. This is browning, so it can't be having that much more to go. Heck yeah. Look at that garlic. Couple more weeks, a month. Garlic, one of the easiest things to plant. Plant it in October. I think that's what happened. We planted this in November. Put down mulch. You really don't come back until you need to harvest it in June. Maybe in my case, July, since I didn't plant till November. A stair to go in here. We gotta get the silage turf in here. I feel like it. Yeah. Normally, we have this whole thing jammed out. And here, now we have one row of tomatoes. Gideon, you wanna go turn on our drip? He said the drip isn't attached. This is hard with, with, with a 25 pound baby on me. Can I set you down? Mm -hmm. Hopefully the pressure regulator is on it over here because it's not on it over here. I see it. Hopefully that's just turned on. It means you can just turn it off, okay. Yep. Now we should be having a drip. Go at our weeding, getting some greens for our chickens at the same time. I think this is case in point. I almost lost this garden for, for its jungleality, but just today I said, you know what? 10 minutes, 10 minutes every day, I'm gonna reclaim this garden. And then it'll be 10 minutes once a week. But look. Like you can see down in between the potatoes. Could have very well saved these potatoes. Now, we have greens for our chickens. Yeah, this is a ways to drive for greens. And whatever happened to putting chickens next to a garden? Well, down in the crop garden, I'm gonna put pigs next to the garden. We're gonna have a pig boy. We once had one as an experiment. It worked. We're gonna be a more Hey, hey, don't do that. But we raised two pigs, probably on just 100 pounds. Grain, that's just two bags. Here, follow me over here. Pigs lived on garden weeds, extra produce, kitchen scraps. Two pigs raised up to 10 months on maybe, what it cost us? Maybe 60 bucks for probably $3,000 worth of pork. You're gonna have uh, six times 16 more, 16 feet. Yeah. That's like almost, a, that's over 100 feet, isn't it? That's like 96 feet. You're not supposed to do math in public. 96 feet, so we need, how many you got there? This is probably 16 right here. The least they sell it is 100 feet, so we'll have some extra, which I guess is okay. You wanna stay here or go? Go. Chickens generally don't like tall grass, so it's good to bring them in after the cows. Chick shaw. Hard at work in the pasture. This chick shawl, so proud of it. Chris, my co-author on this, on this book, has just tied it up so nice. Chick shawl, one of my most versatile mobile, well, shawls, <laughs> coupon wheels. Hold up to 36 birds in that thing. You know what I was getting to earlier? I failed to, Austin, I don't remember if I, if I even got it on camera. I was over there by the tank. Austin's my editor, I'm saying bring it up. I was about to say something like, a lot of you are new to homesteading, you're definitely new to carpentry. We actually have a master class companion. What? Another one? Are you sure? Do you wanna come out here? Okay. I'm really having a hard time getting this out there. But all good things in life come with a struggle, right? So this carpentry class, we have a companion for this. It's available now during the Kickstarter. Don't know if it'll be available in the future but get in on that. You'll get tips for building these builds, but also just overall general carpentry tips. It's definitely worth checking out. That's part of the companion video course when you get Homestead Builds premium level. That's at homesteadbuilds.com. All the stuff that I'm mentioning, if you go to homesteadbuilds.com by June 30th, you get in on the Kickstarter, all kinds of Kickstarter bonuses, early plans, all that. So this is sort of last call-ish. Cause the next time, I'm scared of him. the rooster, it's funny, he knows he can come over here when I'm not here. All these plans for the coops, all these bonuses, the carpentry class isn't gonna be available 
until like over a year. Look, Papa. Until we're getting closer Papa, to print. Look. Here, let me put my hand in there and see if she's broody. Yeah, maybe she is. No. Broody hen won't leave. Really? Pretty sure. First, the broody hen's gonna growl at you. She's gonna puff up. And then she's not gonna leave. Oh, here we go. This is bad that you came out, cuz. He's, that's all he wants this whole morning. I feel like, you you're, this is awful Teddy-esque. Try to get Teddy, our dog, to go outside. Mama. He wasn't having it. You don't want to go milk? Oh, well, Gideon's getting with it back. Wild walnuts right here. Good years, we get a big walnut score. That's probably definitely in our future. Jonah's showing more interest in getting the machine to collect walnuts. It can be a big pain by hand. You know, this chore, probably less than 10 minutes. Are we gonna go eat? It's taking 20 minutes with chiddlers. There's a big gap. Their chickens are gonna be able to crawl under that. Big gap. Chicken what? size gap. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but there's a huge step on it getting it sagging. If you have a stick or something, you could lay on it. But I gotta remember. Yep. That's why I let them interrupt me while I'm filming too. I gotta remember, even though it's forever, even though it's very frustrating. And I do lose my patience sometimes. Can't even see that. That's better. Let's get this this on it though. Why am I doing these chores? Why am I doing this film? This film is my job, by the way. Well, it's for them. I'd like to thank. I mean, I like to survive too and thrive. How's that? Better. Pretty Jerry, but. So if it's about them, I definitely need to be patient with them and 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 make it fun. And if for real, it's about our own survival and thrival. So it's about us. Well, then I just need to enjoy the process, cause. That's all it is. Cooking and eating it is just a fraction. Gotta enjoy the process. These builds definitely help make that happen. When I first had a mobile coop, it was with like bike wheels and it constantly went flat. It was heavy. It was so annoying. That was a pleasure. And if it was difficult, I could hook up a machine to it now. It took me years to develop these systems. And now they're yours. <laughs> I pass them on to you. And when you have these nice systems, you're gonna end up having more patience for your wife and kids. And yourself. Yeah, and just got me. He said, look at this. <laughs> I looked, he got me. Boy, it's rare you get me. <clears throat> oh, don't break your arm now. Oh, be careful. Let me through. Lest you think I have a perfect system and have it all dialed in. I just got water from the creek. And that's not bad. But look how far I'm walking. It's 40 pounds of water. We have a water line here, but it's leaky, so I can't constantly leave it on. Only when the cows are here and it needs to be fixed. This time next year, when you get the tour, I won't be walking to water. It doesn't mean I'll do less work, though. It just means I'll do more with the extra time. <laughs> we'll just expand the homestead. That's what's happened here. As a result of making my jobs easier, kids growing up becoming more helpful. Ouch. We just expand the homestead. Let's go eat. We still got a milk. Two examples of kids coming of age. I'm gonna show you one here in a second when I go inside, but did you notice Josiah's wrapping trees? We're gonna show you that in a little bit. But we need to take a quick break for breakfast. You got wet and then you went in the dirt. Oh, oh my gosh, Winnie. You been playing in the mud? You been playing in the mud? Look. Oh, she's been under the house. Becca has appointments. Mini for the remodel. So she's busy this morning. Look at this. Lily made the eggs. And she made homemade blueberry muffins. So proud of you. I would rub your head, but I just rubbed Winnie. Lily, for these lamb chops, here's your ingredients for a... I printed out a... What do you call it? A marinade. She printed out a marinade. So double that recipe, okay? Let's go milk the cow. No, not right now. Wee. No. Wee. <laughs> swing, swing, he says. Not right now. Wee. Come on, get in. Let's go show them the cows and the sheep that we're gonna eat tonight. That was kind of a whirlwind dining experience, often is in the breakfast. Eggs from the land, but it's interesting. It's kind of like the meal almost feels like it's in the way. It's, it's, it is in the way of the process. But it almost stresses us out, like, oh, we've got to stop and eat. Oh, I haven't milked yet. Did you just blow me a kiss? Bye-bye. Can you blow Mama a kiss? I got to do better than that. Here, we got a real kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
Ah, oh, you're a sweet boy. Give mom a kiss, Gideon. Mm. You're in a kissy moon. Yep. Mm. Can you kiss? <laughs> well, I get out. I actually ran into the water line, bitch. Actually, I should probably milk and then get out and get it out. Why? Because it's it's like nine o'clock. Yeah, I gotta milk. Now the cows. Okay, we were way over there. You can't even see it. We're way over there in the cabin. House is right there. This is gnarly. This is one pasture. Took me a while to get under control. And when guests come, they always say, this pasture is a lot steeper than it looks on camera. I don't know, this wide angle lens takes it away. I also don't set it up right. Right there? Doesn't look too steep, but it's crooked. That's more like it. See how steep that is? More like that. We got everybody in a Premier One because we run the cows. We got them in a sheep net. Cows don't need a sheep net, but we got the cows. They move out and then the sheep move in. I could keep these sheep in with one two strand electric. After all, they are Greg Judy sheep. Problem with that is it's not going to protect us from predators. It's not going to keep little lambs in either. Little calves. She is about to have a baby. That is honey. She's dried off so she can put all her energy into making her baby the last two months. She's probably only a few weeks away. Same thing with Flossie. Flossie's going to retire to the freezer soon. Watch, she's kind of getting old and creaky. She's got mastitis in one teat. She couldn't quite kick. So we had to close that teat down. What is Joel Joe Salatin talks about the three O's you want to call for. Open, when, which means unable to get pregnant. We don't want to wait around for that. Ornery, well, she's plenty ornery and old. So she's got two strikes. And you're her replacement. She just had a calf, giving us a gallon, two gallons of milk on her first freshening. That's great. 100% grass fed, calf sharing. You want to milk right here? It's not a terrible spot. I like it because it's bare. Behind the cows, the sheep. We'll show you them in a second when we move them over. Thank you. We have trees in this pasture, so there's no need to have the milk sled up here. We're just milking her out in the open now. She wouldn't even go into the stanchion at first. Thank you for that gallon of milk this morning, vanilla. The net is also handy for calf separating. Calf's been off, off of her all night long, so we can get the morning milk. And I think it takes a net to keep them off of her. I don't know if you could keep a calf and a mama apart with just two strands electric. Our water has come undone. Dang, I just missed the calf coming over. That's how in tune they are to it. To check on the water and I missed it. Dang, sorry guys. You get cows in a routine. Let's open up the the door and walk away and the right one comes through and everybody else stays. We have this gravity fed water off the top of the mountain. If I have any regrets, which I do, it's that I didn't establish water and access way earlier. But you know what? It's not like I didn't have water. We were doing a well. Why is there barely anything coming out of there? Probably because we drained the tank and that's as fast as the water is coming off the mountain. But still, I counted on a well too long. And a well barely pumps water this high up. Our walls, our wells right down there, it's probably too hard on it. And then if that came off, we're just pumping like it did, then the cows knocked it off. Then we're just pump, our wells pumping water. I mean, this is just gravity fed water off the mountain, so it's not that bad if it just is running. It doesn't affect our drinking, and so it's just some redundancy there. The plans to let her, Flossie, have her baby, separate her, not let her get bred again. Let her nurse for three months and then harvest her. Why? No, see, they're in a habit. Even though we just moved them over there, they see an open fence, they go through it. No! 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 What are we doing? We were just in this paddock, honey. I'm gonna keep you guys facing them. That seems like that's where this story's gonna be. I'm gonna go chase vanilla over here. In time, I'm gonna show you the sheep and then the, the trees. Are the sheep in here there? Jones is gonna come over. They're also creatures of habit. They don't have the internet. And this is the excitement of the day. Funny to think, y'all are still stuck in 1984. Hey guys, just wanna let you know that dancing is now legal. You're so analog. Come on. Come on, sheep. Notice I called sheep, 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 sheep. 
Well, we got four steers that are gonna end up thinking they're sheep. I mean, we have to we have to keep them separate because they'll nurse they'll nurse vanilla, and she'll let them. We're raising them up for beef, so we're gonna have a big harvest. Probably kill a couple this fall, and then maybe let some grow all the way to the next fall. Sheep do like some complete shelter. They don't they're not big fans of the rain. Plus, this has got their minerals. And guys, you recognize this? This is the exact same thing as the meat shawl for the birds, but it's got a mineral feeder here. Yeah, see? Mount, mount a mineral on there, and you've turned your meat shawl into a sheep shawl. And this will make it into Homestead Build book number one, which I'm excited about, because we can only fit, I mean, we're looking at a like 400 plus page book. A little over a dozen designs. We could only do my chicken and gardening builds in this book one that we're promoting right now. Book two will be even further out as we perfect these designs like the milk sled, the pig sled, the pig port, our greenhouse. We'll have a greenhouse. It'll have the A-frame greenhouse which is gonna be probably plenty for most people. But if you're extra like us, Beauty's got her own custom greenhouse she's wanting to design and share with you. And that'll be book two, just to give you guys a super heads up. I mean, this book one, Homestead Builds, is probably not gonna print until 2024 Christmas. I mean, that's why I'm saying get in now so you can get the plans as they drip out now. Because it's not gonna be till 2024 that it's available again, Christmas, the end of 2024. And once we've gone to print on book one, guess what? <laughs> Take a deep breath, smell the roses, and move on. It'll be book number two. But you're gonna get the sheep shawl. We're sneaking it in as a little Easter egg in book one, it looks like. Back to the tour. We have covered, look, we had a native locust growing here and we decided to cover it. They're forcing our pastures. This was growing naturally. And, and locust is a great tree. It'll end up being a hardwood we can use, but it also gives a great speckled shade. It's not a solid shade like a oak. We did have to cut and protect it because the sheep love it. Doesn't look like the cows love it because they were here and didn't touch it. We're forcing our pastures. Why not do it with fruit trees? Forget a, a cute little orchard. Our priority is lamb meat, raw dairy, and beef. Everything revolves around them. That means instead of taking pasture and dedicating it to an orchard that they can't use, spiders will live in these trees, birds will live in these trees and eat flies. They'll also use this tree. We are not saving this tree. They call this the tree of heaven. They ought to call it the tree of hell because it's just terrible. It's quite useless. They rub on it and it's a rub. This is a little shade for them. So it's, I shouldn't say it's completely useless. I mean, they're rubbing and sh shading on this. And I imagine it's spiders like it. So I take that back. It's not completely useless. But it's kind of like a weed tree. Pretty, isn't it? Anyway, back to the tree. The sheep will definitely eat it. We've just got 16 feet of woven wire. We've set T posts at 47 inches apart all around it, wrapped it. We did put clips in one area right there in the middle. And then those are T post clips you can buy along with the T post, any hardware store. And then the ends, see, we take the ends that extra piece and just wrap it around the T-post and we're good. And that's been working so far. That'll probably have to stay on there 10 years before it's strong enough to stand on its own against stud muffin rubbing on it. This is about filled up for the sheep. That's the cool thing, that was the cow's water yesterday. So we only have to fill up one water a day. Now what we do is we go get the old water right there and we're gonna bring it down to the new cow's paddock. And it'll be filling up. This is actually the end of the water line. Over here, we'll have to extend it before we go to the mountain board course. Underlying quality that's in everyone that mountain boards is everybody's a little bit crazy. Turn it off, unhook it. We roll it up to get it through the, the gnarly section coming up. Well, this is gonna be bad. I hope I can get out of it all right, Henry. We're gonna bury this water line, so the bury the water line is gonna go along the S-axis road here above this field. And we've put in one inch water line with this contraption everywhere. We have a shut off in the line. T every hundred feet. 
The pipe is 100 feet. Our water hose is 100 feet. So it works out about right. If you have a connection about every 100 feet, you can get about anywhere. Now we're gonna snake this down to the water trough. Oh my gosh, what a nightmare. Tour's turning into a vlog, isn't it? It's supposed to just come out here and be all smooth. This is the reality. Every year, we smoothify. And we get less and less frustrations like this. Except we just keep expanding, so I'm really caught. Gosh. Too blessed to be stressed. You can see and hear water trying to go through it. Lots of water coming out. Why is there no more water? No more water. We get kinked? No, I think it's climbing that hill. Comes down and then up. Maybe it's having to go up. Well, cows knocked off the hose from the auto water and it probably drained the whole reserve tank. So now we're on the speed of the spring in the intake, which isn't very fast. When the tank's full, we're on the speed of all the water and pressure in the line. Woo! I'm sorry. A lot of this tour has been comment, has turned into straighten out the water hose tour. Look at this though, just love this. Just love this mix of bramble and grass. It just, I don't know, something about it sings to me. It's all bringing up minerals deep in the ground. And the cows like a lot of it. It's not gonna eat that yellow dock, but it's cheap well. Alrighty, you're gonna come over here. You are, aren't you? This is like a new toy for a toddler. Half on the sheep side, see if that helps us at all. We're gonna go get Sally unstuck. That'll be interesting, hang tight. And I wanna show you two more things. One of them being the original farmhouse. Another one where I got Nacho, and I guess there's one more. That's why I called this video 12 acres of abundance and not 10 like I normally do because we have two new acreages. I'm thinking with the winch, we pull this way. Yeah. I'm thinking that tree right there. Yeah. And it'll pull me out and over. Hopefully that's far enough over. It'll get me out of that ditch. Pull on that when I hit the out button. You getting it around that tree? Gonna go around? Woo! It's easier than I thought. Oh, we're barely out. We need to pull forward and then back up. Hey, are you kidding me? You gotta be joking. I backed right in. All right, let's do it again. How do I enjoy this process? Daddy. Too blessed to be stressed. Daddy. I'm supposed to be giving you guys a tour. Let it go, let go, let go. No, I'm giving you entertainment. All right, I'm gonna be thankful for this winch. I'm gonna be thankful for this little guy. Time with him. And then this guy. Like what the heck, all my bigger kids are already more independent, they're not even with me. Working on our so track get, loader. Hydraulic line. To the cab, but. What? Yeah, see that whole And thing. you pull it up with the. The whole cab comes up, and then that's what's Arms. underneath it. Wow. Your pump and everything. What happened? It was a loose, uh, took a couple lines were loose. What do you think caused that? Just, Just vibration. And you lifted the cab with the arms of the track loader? Uh, no, you just pick it up. Take these two. Uh, it's that easy. Yeah, take this bolt. It doesn't bolt, look. Same on the other side, then you just push it up. And it's on uh, wow. shocks, like a rear glass. Oh, okay. And, so And they just said it has a lock on it. Just had a hydraulic leak in it yesterday. Jonah thought he had a brush, but wasn't the case. Henry, let's go process this milk. Show them the old house. Is it heavy? It's, it's real heavy. We gotta get the green egg out of here. They're about to start construction on this. Randolph, you taking off the roof? Yeah, it's time to get rid of them. Okay. He was talking about these trusses are coming out in one piece. Yeah. So I might end up building a shed out of those trusses. So we'll, so we'll keep the rest of this roof. Wow. I need to get this moved over here so the track loader can come get it. Henry, let's go do this milk. We gotta get that milk in the cooler. The original farmhouse. I'm just building upon what people before us have built upon. Grandpa definitely got this old house. 
with Burl Holler, but it was the only thing. My dad ended up building the Holler house and the cabin. He's made improvements on this house, as have I. Now the OG house is a guest house. It's a hyperbaric chamber, talk show studio, the guest bedroom, the original dresser my granny used to have. There's my grandpa with an ox team at an orphanage actually, worked for an orphanage. That bathroom's an addition. <laughs> this 700 square feet, I think I'm in a tiny cabin. My dad grew up here with four brothers and sisters, same situation as mine. And uh, no running water electricity. <laughs> and this house is for milk processing. Switched out our ice packs to new frozen packs, the Yeti cooler, our milk in there. You want to get it to 40 degrees within an hour for longest preservation. And we have this milk fridge. We missed milking a couple days because the calf got in, but we're still in good shape. What do we got? Four or five gallons in there? Because hey, Gideon, you can bring some of these apples home. We're out of apples in our ice pack freezer. Come on, my man. Let's go show him Nacho. How old will you be when you start driving a machine? Probably pretty early. <laughs> he's look, he's pointing to his machine on his on his shirt. I won't be surprised if it's four like Andrew. Yeah. After we show you Nacho, I can't wait to show you over there the two acre. That's what we spent all winter clearing. Can't wait to show you guys. Okay, that's where Nacho was. Oh my gosh, the boys did such a good job. I wish I would have gotten it before. Look at this silvo pasture the boys have created. They need me and my chainsaw for some of these big trees. That maple we could get for our flooring. We're gonna horse log some more, get the rest of our flooring and cabinets. That maple will be good for our floor. Look at this. Well, if you wanna see what all the boys did, let me show you this. Big pile of brush. And you know, before that, the sheep were over there. This is turning into a nice silvo pasture. We probably keep this oak tree. Take that one, take that poplar, and now, we come back through, well they gotta smooth it up. It'll be more, it'll be lush grass, less bramble. This is what it would have looked like. More like that. The sheep went through and then the machines went through. And that's what it looks like. I did a good job. It did do a good job. Still too many trees. Still it's too dark in here. Not enough sunlight getting down in here. Nacho going to work on this paddock. Big paddock. Where, where are we? Were we just around grandma's house? We're just farming every nook and cranny we've got. And the ones closest to our house is first. I mean, I'm impressed. Well, it would have took us a couple of weeks by a chainsaw, just took half a day with the machine. Do you like that apple? Yeah. All right, let's show them one more thing. I have to show you this. So proud of grandma. Grew up in Florida. No growing experience. She's jamming out a potato garden. She got some chickens from us. In a chickshaw mini me. You guys want to build that? That's a four by four chickshaw. And it's good up to 24 hens. You know what I'm gonna say? By now, you know how to go and build that thing. And Homestead builds a link in description. And I have to show you her raised bed. Oh, this is a newly built hurricane proof raised bed with the new trellis options. So many hooks, hooks everywhere. Hanging rebarb, she's hung rebarb with tomato twine. It's a nice pergola, you could grow grapes and grow up the side of it. Any vining thing, what's that? Nice. Hey, it's give to mama. Oh, you give it to mom, you get the points. Okay, well that's optional. And it's got sides too. You can put optional sides on it, there, there they are. Keep the rodents out. Grandma's hung a fly trap on There's one of her There's very hooks. little fries in there. So many options here. Maybe you could Hang a bucket here, fill it up with water, and do a drip irrigation. Well, you could do whatever you want with this. Guys, you can build this. We're gonna make the plans for this, too. Come on. Okay, and if you wanna see the schedule for the release of all these plans, I've got the schedule for this on our Kickstarter page right now. It tells you when everything is releasing. And we hope to over-promise. No, <laughs> no, no, we hope to under-promise and over-deliver, so hopefully get ahead of schedule. You're forgetting somebody. All right, come on, Henry. Look at that boy run, woo! Look at that. That needs nacho. Woo. And across the way, what? This is jamming. I don't know if it's because we put more grass on it or what, that looks great. When you come burn that burn pile. You can kind of see all of it from right here. 
We cleared this. We cleared this over the winter. We cleared it. And now when grazing's up at Grandma's, we got plenty of stuff for nacho down here. And this is kind of a cool area. It's across the creek, which keeps people separated. Like, nacho were to get out, he's got to get across the creek. He's got to get into the other fence with the ladies. And we're trying to keep him separated until breeding time. Let's go check on the dinner. Come on. And I'll definitely show you guys that, the end result. Two weeks on that Kickstarter. You wanna get in on it while you can get the bonuses, while certain rewards exist. A discount on the final product. Hey, how are your errands? Good. Any progress on the house? No, I haven't gotten any information. Get those windows ordered? No, not yet. I'm just waiting for her to get back to me. Are they one of those companies don't work on Monday? No, she's working. Oh, good. I've been emailing with her. You stressed out? I'm just tired. A little bit. Mama, so hot. Because I have more Mama, things I need to do. Mama, Mama, like that, that wasn't Mama, all of Mama. my parents. I have a more, Mama. more computer work. Yes. Mama, Mama. Those are green. Here's the marinade. Turned out nice. Let's get it in the fridge. What inspired this marinade, Beck? What did? I think she's tired of my meat and salt cooking. If it's up to me, it's just meat and salt. Super simple. If it's up to her, it's like, it's nice. It's actually training. The show was over until tonight's dinner, and then Jonah tells me the sheep are out. I send Lily. Lily comes back and tells me they're entangled, one of them. I know the fence wasn't on. That's probably why they got out. At least our cow's water filled up. Where are the steers? Can you guys heard the steers? Look at this. Who is it? It's Floppy. Is it? I thought Floppy knew better than this. Oh my gosh, try to do it again. That's not Floppy. Premier One can be your best friend or your worst nightmare. Depending on if the sheep go through it or not. Really? You still going at it? It's finished. You might train during the middle of the day, but you also gonna to go get sheep milk a day or three o'clock in the morning like it the other day. <laughs> Boys have been clearing today with the machines and wanted me to see it. You want to show me this job? Sure. Goodness gracious. Really? And half a day? Because <laughs> this would take us a three weeks by hand. Look at this pile of brush. What? This is incredible, guys. Had to leave some of the big ones. Look at this view. Heck yeah, boys. This crossroads. We're gonna tap these trails too. Two big brush piles, guys. We got the coolest boys in the world. And really, we could go that way too. These machines are just gonna open it up for us. The machines, it'll be a lot cheaper than buying land around here. Land around here is 30 to 50,000 an acre. Between that and the luchadors, a quarter of an acre in a day. So, Four days. <laughs> yeah, I think those machines are gonna pay for themselves. Oh boy, he's still sleeping. He doesn't take many naps anymore. When he does, he goes all out. Can I pause you, Dr. Laura? No. Who's Dr. Laura fixing today? <laughs> you know, I can embarrassed. Dr. Laura Schlesinger. 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 Yeah, I like to listen to her. <laughs> She's no nonsense. She's fixing a lot of people. Oh yeah. You making mac and cheese? Yeah. Gluten free. Your trusty old recipe. You remember what that recipe's from? No, it's I couldn't find it. It's printed off the internet a long time ago. Yes, it doesn't even have a. This one, this next one's Pioneer Woman. You think it's Pioneer Woman? No, no, because no, she's not good. This pretty. one is um this recipe I found, golly, probably over ten years ago on the internet and I have tried to find it because I was not home and I wanted to make this is precious I wanted to make it Don't but I, wasn't, I didn't this. have my recipe so I tried to find it on Google and I could not find it the I was like put it in your phone yeah I needed it smells so good in here it really does smell good you find those up yes let me go let me help you and the zucchini boat the fries heck yeah sure. Freddie's feeling good She's Freddy. That was my dad's nickname for her. <laughs> she used to say, Freddy's feeling good. And she'd start dancing. Feeling good? Yeah, there it is. Freddy's feeling good, he'd say. He'd say. Well, I gotta call the pig butcher. Yeah. And then I'll help. Waking up. It's like 4.30. How long has he been asleep? 
Three hours? Two and a half hours. Okay. It's not gonna go to bed till like 10 o'clock. I shouldn't say that. Don't speak that. How is it, everyone? Good. How'd the lamp and the land turn out? Mm. So good. Everybody get, likes it? Mom's mac and cheese and zucchini boy would like it when you cook back. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Okay, stop. We're smoking again, babe. Got the smoker out of there. We're ready for the roof to come off of the holler house. Video coming soon.